بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters welcome to another episode in our beautiful journey to the afterlife and this series has been covering the topic of death and the journey of the soul as well as the journey of the soul through the day of resurrection and hellfire and paradise and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us paradise Today, inshallah ta'ala, we will discuss the day of judgment, the day of resurrection. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran, and we see in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa many different names for this day. Why is that? And so some of the scholars like Imam al-Qurtubi rahimullah, they listed over 50 different names for it. So let us cover quickly some of the names, perhaps 20 of the names, so that we can understand a little of the perspectives regarding these names for the day of resurrection. The first name and the most commonly used in the Qur'an is Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And this is mentioned in at least 70 different verses. The day of standing, the day of rising, the day of standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another name is Al-Yawm Al-Akhir, the final day, because there is no day after that. There is only eternity after that. Another name that is used is As-Sa'ah, the hour. Another name that is used is Yawm Al-Ba'th, the day of resurrection the day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect all man and jinn. Another name that is used is Yawm al-Khuruj, the day of coming out from the graves. Another name that you'll see in the Qur'an is Al-Qari'ah, the striking hour. Imam al-Qurtubi rahimahullah said, this is because it will strike the hearts with terror. Or so people will be stricken with the calamities of time, the terrors and calamities of time. Another name that is used is Yawm al-Fasl, the day of judgment or decision. So Allah, يفصل بينهم, He will decide between the people. He will decide between the people regarding that which they deferred and disputed about. Another name that you'll see in the Qur'an is Yawm ad din the day of recompense. And so this is the day of reckoning because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish or reward people based on what they did. Another name that was used, and these are two names that are connected, is as and at and so this is the first blowing of the trumpet, and this is the second, at tama the greater catastrophe for the day of resurrection. Another name that is often used is Yawm al-Hasra, the day of grief and regret, because many people on that day will be filled with grief and regret. You do not want to come on the day of judgment with regret, because regret on that day, you cannot do anything with it. There's no way to ransom yourself. And so the disbelievers on that day will be filled with regret and those who committed many sins and did not repent will also be in a state of regret and grief. Another name that is used is Al-Ghashiyah, that, that which is overwhelming. Or Yawm Al-Khulud, the day that is eternal. Or Yawm Al-Hisab, the day of reckoning. Or Al-Waqi'ah, the event that is to take place. Or Yawm al waid the day of warning. Or Yawm Al-Azifah, the day that is drawing near. Another name that is used is al haqqa that which is inevitable. Another name that is used is Yawm al talaq with a ta' and not a ta. And this is the day of mutual meeting because people will meet one another. And some scholars said, like Ibn Kathir said, that Ibn Abbas said, that this is the day that Adam السلام, will meet the last of his children. Others said that people will meet their deeds on that day. So Yawm al talaq And there's also a name Yawm al tanad that is used in the Qur'an. This is the day in which there will be mutual calling between people. And the last one that we'll mention is Yawm al taghabun The day of mutual loss and gain. And this is the day that many people will lose and many people will be disgraced while many others will have a lot to gain from the rewards and from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, all of these are names for the Day of Judgment and mentioned throughout the Qur'an so that we can perceive and understand the different aspects of the Day of Judgment. So it is the day of mutual calling, it is the day that is a striking hour, a day of regrief and regret. Uh, so you have all these different names and labels and nicknames so that you understand the Day of Judgment with these different various names. And so you understand there's many things taking place on that day and it is an important day. 
If Allah mentions it multiple times in the Quran, it is important, significant. It is crucial to prepare for. So the people will be dead. They will be in their graves. But right before all the people die, what causes them to die is the blowing of the trumpet. The blast of the trumpet, as-sur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Everything that is on this earth will perish. Everything will die. The only thing that will remain is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's countenance, His face subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning everything He created will cease to exist. And so a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him, what is as-sur? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as-sur is a horn that is blown into. This is an authentic hadith reported by Tirmidhi. So it's a horn that is blown into. Who will blow into it? It is well known amongst the scholars, amongst the Muslims, that the angel Israfil alayhi salam will blow into the trumpet. So Israfil alayhi salam was given this one task. And from the time that he was given this task, he's been holding on to the trumpet and he's ready to blow into the trumpet at any moment. So Israfil alayhi salam, the angel, is ready and waiting for the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, since the time when the one who will blow the trumpet was appointed, Israfil, his eyes are ready, looking towards the throne of Allah, fearing lest the command be issued to him before he blinks, as if his eyes are two brilliant stars. So Israfil is waiting. And as soon as he's given the command, he will blow into it. He will blow into the horn. So now the hour is drawing nearer. The day of judgment is drawing closer to us, especially in our times. So Israfil is waiting even more prepared and ready to blow in the trumpet. The Prophet ﷺ said, How can I relax? How can I relax when the bearer of the trumpet, Israfil, has put the trumpet to his lips and tilted his forehead and he is listening out waiting for the command to blow the trumpet? How can I relax? So the Muslims asked, What should we say, O Messenger of Allah wasallam? The Prophet said, Say, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ تَوَكَّلْنَا عَلَى اللَّهِ رَبِّنَا So he said, say, Allah is sufficient for us and He is the best disposer of affairs and we put our full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord. Now, when will Israfil blow into it? When will the day of resurrection begin? Allahu a'lam. We don't know when, as in what time period. But we know it will take place on a Friday. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells us, as was reported by Tirmidhi, the best day on which the sun rises is Friday. On this day, Adam was created. On this day, he came down from paradise. It was Friday when his repentance was accepted, his tawbah was accepted. And this was the day that he also died. The hour, meaning the day of resurrection, will begin and occur on Friday. There is no creature which is not waiting every Friday from the moment that the sun rises, fearing the hour apart from jinn and mankind. So everything in this world, in this universe, teeming with life, is in fear on Friday, waiting for the hour to begin. And in our times, we are even closer to the hour than any time in history. Meaning, there are so many signs that have passed that we are almost at the hour. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when it will be. Even the Prophet ﷺ did not know. So Israfil salam will blow into the horn and that is what causes people to die. And this is the first blowing of the trumpet. And there will be a second blowing of the trumpet and we will discuss that in details inshallah ta'ala in a future episode. Now when you talk about the day of resurrection, it's important to mention that there's at least three categories of people who deny the day of judgment. Three types of people. The first, which is very common nowadays, are the atheists. So these are the people who deny that it even exists because they deny the creation, uh, they deny the existence of the creator. So they deny that we are a creation and they deny that there is a creation of the day of resurrection, that there is such a thing. So the atheists disregard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They disregard that this universe came about from a creator. And so because of that, they disregard all the branches of belief in Allah. So there's no point in talking to an atheist about the day of resurrection. Because if they don't believe in Allah, then they won't believe in a day of judgment. So first speak to them about the concept of believing in the Creator, which is more logical and rational than anything else. And then the branch of that, which is the day of resurrection. The second type of people who deny the day of resurrection are those who acknowledge the Creator. So they do believe in God. They believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they do not believe in the day of resurrection. They simply think that if we die, how could Allah bring us back? 
And this is very foolish of them to say. The third type of people are those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or those who believe in the resurrection but not in the way that it was described in the divinely related scriptures. So those who believe in God or they believe in a higher being a greater deity but they do not believe in the resurrection in the correct way. And this is an example of those who believe in reincarnation or those who believe in the day of judgment as a different type of day of judgment. So they believe something else will happen to them after death. Now, there's so much evidence of the resurrection that's mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah that we don't really have time for it because it will go on for hours. There's so much evidence for it. And it is rational and it is logical to believe in the day of resurrection. There is nothing irrational about it. And so the first thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with every messenger reminded them and reminded us about the day of judgment. That there will be a day for you and I to be held accountable for everything that we did. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran condemning the people who deny the day of judgment. And so some of the people they'll say we disbelieved in Allah and we disbelieved in the day of judgment. So they didn't believe in these things. And Allah condemns them and warns them. And then there's a third type of people in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them that He is able to do the resurrection just as He was able to create them. He's able to bring it about. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا خَلْقُكُمْ وَلَا بَعْثُكُمْ إِلَّا كَنَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ That your creation and your resurrection, once again, it's like one blowing of the soul, meaning it is very easy, it's all one thing. It's very simple for Allah. It is not difficult for the one who created you to recreate you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to the people who disbelieve that they will be recreated, but they believe in Allah. They believe in a creator, but they don't think Allah will bring them back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them that if He were to bring them, they should look at the examples around them as life and death. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bring them back just as He brings back life and death in this very life, in this world that we exist in. And then there is the example of the people who want proof of the resurrection after death, but they ignore the fact that their own creation is the single greatest proof. Their own creation is proof against them is a proof against them. So the one who is able to create them once is able to recreate them. So some people will say, So the human being says, if I'm going to die, meaning I don't believe that I will be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَا يَذْكُرُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَمْ يَكُ شَيْئًا Does man not remember when we created him before and he was nothing? He was nothing before and we created him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him and He will bring him back once again. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to travel throughout the land and see how the creation began. And the beautiful thing is that when people see nature, they remember Allah. They're so amazed by it, it's so beautiful. And this is a reminder that there is a Creator, it's a sign of the Creator. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to see. And after we come back from a short break inshaAllah ta'ala, we will conclude some of the things related to belief in the day of resurrection. So stick around inshaAllah and we'll be right back. Scale of justice will be broken. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back from the break. Before we took a short break, we started mentioning some of the different things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us in regards to the day of resurrection. Some of the things related to believing in the day of resurrection. And so people question how will there be a day of resurrection if we die? How would Allah bring us back? If Allah created you once, He can recreate you again. If Allah created you the first time, it is only rational and logical to believe that He can recreate you once again. There is nothing strange about this. Rather, this makes more sense. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to travel throughout the land so that we can see how the creation began. قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ بَدَأَ الْخَلْقِ Travel throughout the land and see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began the creation. ثُمَّ اللَّهُ يُنْشِئُ النَّشْأَةَ الْآخِرَةَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about and produce the final creation. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Verily Allah is able to do all things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to travel throughout the land. And all of these are different evidences about the Day of Resurrection. One of the scholars of the past, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he quoted all of these different ayat and he said the following. He said, It is obvious to rational minds that the creation of the heavens and the earth is greater than the creation of something like the children of Adam, than human beings. And the power involved is greater, and what is easier is more likely to be possible. 
So he references the ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَخَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ خَلْقِ النَّاسِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Verily the heavens and the earth, their creation is greater than the creation of mankind. But most people know not. So if you look throughout the Qur'an, you'll notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving direct messages to people of different beliefs, such as to the idol worshippers, or to the Christians, or to the Jews. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving different messages. But there aren't too many messages directed at atheism. Why? Because atheism is so twisted that it was never common before. It is so twisted that it contradicts itself. It's irrational. And yet some people don't realize that. Most people in our times don't realize this. Because in our times, the rise of atheism is much more common than any other time in history. And in our times, we are farther away from God than any other time in history. And this is a very sad thing, but it is a reality. And so you look at atheism and how people did not embrace it because of how irrational it was in the past and how it's so common nowadays that people want to argue and argue and argue and they want to disguise this atheism, this irrationalism as something that is intellectual, as something that is more correct. And they try to mock religion. They try to mock the idea of believing in a creator. And this is the sad reality of where we are today. So Ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah, he said a very famous quote. You know, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah, people used to come and argue with him. People of all types of philosophies, all the philosophers, all the people of intellect used to come to him and argue and debate, and they used to lose every single time. He's never lost an argument. He's always been victorious. He was an intellect and a philosopher and a great scholar. So one time, somebody came to him and asked him for proof of the existence of Allah. Bring me proof that God exists. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, how do you expect me to go find you proofs for the existence of Allah when everything around you is screaming the proofs of His existence? Everything is a sign indicating that He exists. How do you want me to bring you proof or invent a proof when everything around you is screaming of His existence? The evidence for the existence of Allah is brighter. The evidence for the existence of Allah is brighter than the sun in the middle of the day when there are no clouds. Do you understand what he's saying here? He's saying because Allah created the sun, so how long would you argue with someone who doesn't believe in the sun on a bright day when there are no clouds? How long would you argue with this person? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the sun. Where did the sun come from? Even the distance actually between the sun and the earth, there is nothing like it. And if the earth were, were to be moved by a couple of yards or a couple of meters, then the earth would suffer. Everything would perish. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this perfect environment, this perfect atmosphere, because He created us and put us here. He caused us to be here for a purpose. Everything did not just come about from nothing. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to remember this. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us many examples of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs. So the wisdom of Allah dictates that everyone will be resurrected back to Allah to be brought to account and rewarded or punished for what they used to do. This is what Allah has decreed and decided. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided for the slaves who do good, the servants who do good to be rewarded, and those who did evil and mischief, and those who killed and stole and raped and did all of these terrible things, they will be punished for it. And it's only fair. It is only just that people who go through this life with evil will be punished for it in the day, on the day of resurrection. And so these people think they're getting away with it because they disbelieve in the akhirah, they disbelieve in the afterlife. And if shaitan tries and gains victory over you, and convinces you that the afterlife is not real, and makes you disregard and disbelieve in the day of resurrection, then he has gained victory over you. Why? Because you will do anything at all. You can commit any crime whatsoever, and shaitan convinced you that there's no consequence for it, that you can do it. You can kill people, you can steal, you can do all of these things, and shaitan is telling you there is no consequence for it. He's telling you that Allah will not punish you for it. And although some things may not be uh, harming other people in this world, when they harm you yourself and they are prohibited by the Creator, these are still things that will give you consequences, bring about consequences on the Day of Judgment. And so the people who argue about universal truths and universal moral uh, you know, ethics and morality and things like this, all of these things are silly and man-made because people have different perspectives. And people will be brought to account on the Day of Judgment based on how the Creator decreed for them to live this life.
So Allah, the one who created us, knows what is good for us. He knows what is good for society, for your family, for your marriage, for this entire nation, for the entire world. Allah knows what is good for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed what is permissible and what is prohibited, what is liked and what is disliked. And so all of this is to bring about a good society, a society of peace and harmony, and a society that allows us to live fruitful lives so that we are successful in this world and successful on the day of resurrection. And there is nothing that brings about both types of success except the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاءَ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا بَاطِلًا ذَلِكَ ظَنُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَوَيْنٌ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنَ النَّارِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we did not create the heavens and the earth without purpose, without aim, without a reason. This is the assumption of those who disbelieve. So beware and low to those who disbelieve from the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمْ نَجْعَلُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَالْمُفْسِدِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَمْ نَجْعَلُ الْمُتَّقِينَ كَالْفُجَّارِ Are we going to make or treat those who believe and do righteous deeds? Like those who are corrupt on the earth? Like those who are corrupt on the earth? Or should we treat those who fear God like with those who are wicked? So these two cannot be equivalent. It is not fair for them to be equivalent. Because Allah commanded one thing and He created us and He has a right over us. So the Prophet ﷺ tells us that Allah has a right over us and we have a right over Allah. Allah's right over us that we have to fulfill is that we worship Him because He created us and we don't associate partners with Him. That is His right as a creator. And you as a creation have to fulfill that. But you have a right upon Allah. And that is if you worship Allah and you don't associate partners with Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save you and protect you and allow you to enter paradise eternally. And so you have a right, but you have to fulfill the right of Allah first if you want your right to be fulfilled second. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and says, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyaddabbaru ayatih wa liyatadakkaru ulul albab. This is a blessed book which we have revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that they may reflect upon its verses and that the people of understanding and comprehension will be reminded. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all of these reminders again and again and again for our own benefit. Because on the day of resurrection, all of us will come out from the graves and all of us will walk towards Ard al-Mahshar, the land of gathering. Now the people who believed in Allah, they believed in the Day of Judgment, they already know that it was true. They already know that they succeeded. Meaning they saw their position in Jannah when they were still in the grave. The people who died, as soon as they died, they saw the angel of death or they saw the, the place in the hellfire, they saw the punishment or the other angels that came down to them. They saw all of these things and what did they do? They started realizing that everything that they were told about God, everything they were told about the hereafter is true. But it's too late because the soul left the body. And once your soul leaves the body, it's too late. So Iman, faith, is only useful if you have it before you die. It's only useful before you leave this world. Otherwise, if you leave this world not believing in Allah, not believing in the Day of Judgment, not preparing for it, then you have nothing to stand for on the Day of Judgment. You have nothing with you to protect you on the Day of Resurrection. All you have is loss and grief and regret. And so the people on that day will be filled with regret. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from having regret on the Day of Resurrection. So the people will stand on, on the place of gathering, the land of gathering, and they will start to walk towards this place and everyone will gather. And as they're walking, they're not socializing. It's not like they're having fun talking about the Day of Judgment. Rather, they're all in fear and they're all waiting to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who believed and those who disbelieved, everyone is in fear. Those are, those are the people that are walking and they're thinking, what will I say? And there will be people who are protected on that day. They will be safe and happy on that day. And there will be people who are punished on that day and they will be in grief and misery throughout that day. And it only gets worse for them. Nothing gets better after that moment. And that is why the grave was the first stage. So everything that was done good in the grave is a sign that everything after will go well. And everything bad in the grave is a sign and a reflection that everything after it will be bad. So the people are standing there waiting to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're not knowing what to think. What will I say to Allah? What is my excuse? What can I say about those sins? What can I say about the lack of good deeds, the lack of faith, the lack of strength in my beliefs? So the people will be standing there in misery, in terror, 
in horror, in grief, in regret. And all they can think is, I wish I did more. So my dear brothers and sisters, prepare yourself for the Day of Judgment before the Day of Judgment comes. Hold yourself accountable before you're held accountable. Prepare for that big meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to meet Allah and be happy, to love that meeting with Allah. You don't want to be filled with regret, with regret or with grief. So when you prepare for it now, the standing on that day will be easier. When you stand up in this life, meaning you prepare for the hereafter, the standing on the Day of Judgment will be easier. Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah famously said, whoever audits himself in this life, meaning they hold themselves accountable now, their auditing on the Day of Judgment will be easy. But whoever does not audit themselves in this life, their auditing on the Day of Judgment will be severe and difficult. And on that day, it is much worse than auditing yourself here and now. When you audit yourself now, here and now, today, all you have to do is to reflect on where you are, where you think you're ending up on the Day of Judgment, and what you have to do to get to a better place. So you turn back to Allah. You increase in your good deeds. You get rid of some of your sins and some of your bad friends. Rather, get rid of all of your sins and all of your bad friends. And this is the way to success. So work towards preparing for that day when you're meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prepare for that day in which you will be standing and make sure that you're not standing on that day with, regret, with grief and regret. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow you to be of those who succeed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and join us in a future episode inshallah ta'ala as we discuss more details about the Day of Judgment, the terrors of the Day of Judgment, the state of the righteous of the Day of Judgment. And we will discuss some of the beautiful things that you can do now in this life so that your akhirah will be better inshallah ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to make us of those who are safe on the day of judgment and safe in paradise wa sallallahumma ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh scale of justice will be broke before man now you shall have to explain your whole life span what you did in the open and what you conceive From big to small shall today be revealed Your deeds